All right, we're live, let's do this. G'day, my name's Aaron, or Az. This is my farm, homestead, here in Australia. And in this video, I'm gonna show you absolutely everything you should need to know about growing your own fruit trees. Even if you've only got a really small bit of land, I'm gonna give you a couple of tips on how to grow as many trees, fruit trees as possible, in a really small uh, area, if you don't have uh, a few acres like I do here. Let's get into it. Literally next to me, I've got a pawpaw tree, papaya, and this one was distracting me, this red pawpaw, which I'll cut open later on. That's a nice fruit. Uh, it took about 10 months, nine, 10 months to get fruit on that. Now it's pretty loaded. The first thing you need to consider is the climate that you want to grow things in. Where do you live? Whether you're tropical and it say stays over, you know, seven, eight, nine degrees Celsius uh, for the majority of the year, that's going to let you grow a lot of your tropical species. But if you're below that, more subtropical. Um, however, there is a little bit of exception depending on certain varieties of fruit as well. Some can be a little bit more cold tolerant or hot tolerant uh, depending on where they've been bred. For example, I've got finger lime, which are an Australian native, one of the great Australian natives, uh, but it just doesn't seem to like where I am here. Pretty wet and humid where I am, but they're you know, more suited to about two and a half thousand kilometers south of me. I'm gi I've given it a try, I can't successfully grow them. The second thing to consider is your access to water. Um, I've got really good access to water here, not only from the sky above me, I live in one of the wettest places in Australia. I've also got a creek and I can legally pump down a bore and I've got mains water as well. So I've got a few different water sources, um, but I've planted some stuff that would really, really likes water, but also on these timber cattle posts behind me, dragon fruit, which need bugger all water. They are a cactus, they're a, a, essentially a desert plant and I'm just growing them in 20 litre pots. 40 litre pots would be more ideal and I don't have them irrigated, so they're a really good one if you don't have much water. Well, I have no idea how this got into the dragon fruit pot, but I'm not complaining because there's some really sweet cherry tomatoes. The third thing to consider is your soil type. So it's not a make or break, but it makes it a hell of a lot easier if you plant you know, with considering your, your soil type. Some things can be grown in pots if you want to grow uh, certain types of produce, like dragon fruits you can get away with growing in a big pot, and some other uh, tropical fruits and produce, but for the most part, yeah, try and, try and line up what you want to grow with, with particular soil, whether it's a well-draining soil, or the soil might hold a lot of moisture and be quite clay rich, uh, but you, know, you can work on your soil as well. It just depends on how much time you have. You can mulch heavily, you can add soil conditioners such as gypsum uh, and really break it apart um, and make it not so heavy. So there's a few things to do, but yeah, definitely consider what soil type you're, you're working with. I'm gonna take you in the greenhouse for this one is propagating things from seed. Uh, eat a fruit that you really like, ideally from an area that you're in. So say if you go to the local markets and you've got yourself uh, you know, whether it's a lychee or a rambutan or a dragon fruit or a jackfruit or a durian or an apple or whatever it might be As long as it's ideally local you can grab the seeds out of that and then propagate it from there So I've got a pretty small greenhouse here It's maybe four meters by three meters and it does all that I need I water it you know, Once a day for 10 or 15 minutes depending on how hot and how dry it is I'll just put it in a really light potting mix as you can see here with a bit of peanut shell, rice husk and a bit of dolomite and a few other bits and pieces but like a nice light well draining mix. That's a durian that's maybe six months old. Here's a native Davidson plum that I got out of the rainforest. Yeah you can propagate it yourself and then I've done this in a really big pot and I want this to grow really big before considering putting it out to sun harden and then from there out into the wild. So here is where I'm very simply sun hardening. I literally mean sun hardening, getting them you know, used to being out in the sun for a little bit before putting them straight in the ground by themselves. So yeah, once your plant's big enough, like that there, there's roots almost starting to come out of the bottom of the pot. I don't want it to get root bound and I'm just gonna find a nice spot for that in the coming days. Now that it's coming out of winter, um, it's gonna stimulate root growth and quite humid with a little bit of rain. It's just optimal for, for plants to get growing once they go on the ground. So keep in mind is when you're gonna plant your trees. You generally, for a lot of fruiting trees, you wouldn't go planting them in the middle of winter. They just wouldn't, 
wouldn't like it. They're going to shut down, be quite dormant, leave them pretty vulnerable. You know, if it's it's really cold and really windy, strip all the leaves off. I like to plant uh, either coming out of summer or coming out of winter, ideally, and around the moon phases as well. So when you decide to plant your, your fruit tree, I like to make sure all the, the grass is cleared down. Just only dig a hole sort of, you know, maybe twice as big as you need so you can loosen up that soil so the roots uh, are encouraged to grow through and they don't really need to struggle through soil if you do have a thicker soil type. Uh, and then from there, mound it up a little bit so they're not getting waterlogged if you're copping a, a hell of a lot of rain. Uh, and then mulch it a bit and then give it a little bit of fert. So whether it's some dolomite or ideally some organic matter. So some chicken manure pellets or some blood and bone meal, I find is really nice to just spread it around. So when you get a little bit of rain, it's gonna seep, seep through into the soil, hit those roots, bang. It's worth keeping in mind as well that when you plant a tree, understanding what the origins of that fruit tree is. Is it a rainforest tree? Uh, does it like having full sun? You know, where, what are, what's the ideal environment for it? So quite a lot of the tropical trees that I've planted are rainforest trees, so they like to be quite close to, to other trees, especially for those first few years anyway, because the leaves are susceptible to getting sunburnt. I like to shade over the top of them or intercrop with say a pawpaw or a banana or something that's gonna provide cassava's good, something that's gonna provide some shade, and then when you can cut it out, uh, provide some mulch. I've got four star pickets and some 50% shade cloth. That there's a mangosteen, which I need to do a bit of weeding around, but it's looking looking pretty healthy, but they don't like full sun. Perfect on the hot days. In this row, I've quite densely planted some different jackfruit and champadak. So this is a jackfruit, that's galangal, which is a, like an Asian sort of root spice, similar to that of like ginger and turmeric. It's another jackfruit, so they're only three meters apart. And then literally half a meter away, more galangal, less than half a meter away, a mulberry, mulberry tree, which is starting to throw some fruit. A pineapple, more galangal, a champadak tree. I had a pawpaw here. We've got another jackfruit here, galangal, more pawpaws. And then in here I could throw like ginger and turmeric and chili along the ground. I've got a champadak here. The difference between them and jackfruit. These have got a hairier leaf, hairy leaf. Pawpaw, jackfruit, seedless wax apple, champadak. I've done it quite densely planted. The idea is that you can have more variety in a smaller space and then just keep taking the tops off, keep smacking them off, um, keep them at you know seven, eight foot and then just promote them throwing fruit really low so you can just pick them off with your hand. That's the idea. So another example of this, durian, one and a half meters away, really big ghost chili bush, half a meter away, bananas. If you've only got a really small area in your backyard or your front yard that you want to plant some fruit trees but you think oh this jackfruit or this lychee or this avocado or this mango or whatever it might be is going to grow so big they get ginormous 10 meters high you know eight meters wide whatever it is i i personally think that's a yeah it's just it's just bullshit it's not true here's an extreme example of what i'm talking about in the way of densely planting your generally traditionally speaking your bigger fruit trees so I've got one, two durians. I've got cassava in the middle here. I've got an abiu. I've got another fruiting tree here. I've got two japotic, japotacabas. I've got a pulasan, and I've got another durian next to this euodia tree here, which is a beautiful butterfly host with its flowers. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight trees that generally in this space, you'd have one of them, but I've got them like two, two and a half meters apart. And the idea is I'm literally just gonna keep taking the tops out of them. So as this just, you know, grows up a bit more, take the top off, take the top off, take the top off and just let that uh, grow. Let these branches grow out thicker. And then ideally you just essentially bonsai it. So you're bonsaiing your fruit tree. And then the, you know, in theory, there'll just be fruit hanging, you know, within, within hand height to be able to, to harvest. So I'll let you know if it doesn't work, but I'm pretty convinced it, it will, as long as I've got good light, uh, good airflow, and you know, keep the nutrients up to everything. Should go well. All right, so hopefully this video has given you a bit of insight or the confidence to plant your own fruit trees. 
that's what this is all about, being able to share my journey of becoming as self-sufficient as possible with you so you can you know, try and be a little bit more self-sufficient in your own life or, or just come along for the journey of, of what I'm doing here. But a couple more years and the fruit trees that we've got planted out here will be pumping out some pretty Im impressive produce, some pretty amazing fruit uh, that we've, we've collected, traded, sourced from all, all different parts of Australia and the world. So uh, yeah, if you've got any more questions, let us know in the comments uh, or I'll answer it in other videos. Uh, have an awesome week. See you later.